Hello and welcome to The Road to Recovery, Food and Drink. My name is David Adakian with Eat Drink Rhode Island. And with me on the panel today is Kristen Adamo, the President and CEO of the Providence War Convention and Visitors Bureau, Catherine Farrington, the Vice President of Marketing at Discover Newport, and Jonathan Feiler, the Group Wine Director at Ocean House and the OHM Collection. Uh, thank you all very much for being with me. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Kristen, do you want to kick us off? Sure. My name is Kristen Adamo. I am the president and CEO of Go Providence, which is the Providence Warwick Convention and Visitors Bureau. Uh, we market the city of Providence as a leisure destination. We also bring uh, meetings, conventions, and sporting events to uh, the state of Rhode Island. And um, you probably know us if you're a foodie uh, for Providence Restaurant Weeks, which is twice a year and features more than 100 restaurants. And Catherine? Hi everyone, I'm Catherine Farrington. I'm Vice President of Marketing at Discover Newport. Discover Newport represents both Newport and Bristol County. And we have a, um, offer all kinds of activities and industry resources for attractions, restaurants, retailers, special events, and of course, transportation. We are in the middle of restaurant week currently. Uh, which kicked off on the 6th of November and runs through the 15th. And we do that twice a year as well. Um, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Jonathan? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Jonathan Feiler. I'm the Group Wine Director here at the Ocean House uh, and, I, uh, and OHM Properties. We represent four hotels within Rhode Island uh, and properties within Rhode Island, the Ocean House, We could Pog Inn, the Watch Hill Inn, as well as the Preserve which is one of our newer properties that we manage. And I oversee the beverage program for all four properties, as well as uh, spearhead all of our uh, wine classes. We do private wine classes and dinners uh, where I am in our, in our wine cellar uh, at the Ocean House, as well as work with all of our properties to design <coughs> unique experiences that uh, we've done for many years, but now with in, the, um, in our life of social distancing have become even more important. Uh, at the Ocean House, we have our gondolas, which we feature, um, as well as a few other outdoor activities throughout all of our properties. Fantastic. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. So uh, on the road to recovery, we want to talk about, uh, you know, that road to to get to getting us out of this uh, pandemic. But let's start with, uh, you know, what has been going on for, for each of you in the last uh, seven months uh, and, our, and our furry friends. Uh, if, if <laughs> Uh, as this is this is uh, this is the, the, the beauties of, of doing uh, television uh, from home now. Um, Kristen, why don't you start us off and tell us uh, how things have been going in, in Providence and, and Warwick and, and with the CVB for the last uh, seven eight months. Uh, so, uh, you know, as we were saying before we started taping, uh, Providence really did not enjoy a, a rebound like the southern half of the state did. And so we are really um, a little nervous about the winter. Uh, but the good news is I feel like the restaurants have been able to really utilize the Take It Outside grant money and utilize um, a lot of the other um, things that are available to them. The weather has cooperated. Uh, so for us, it's really about um, getting through the winter. And because we do meetings and conventions, we are um, very much looking towards the future. We have a really robust calendar for 22, 23, and 24. So I like to say, if we can just get through this, we'll be okay. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 it. We will, and we will get through it. It just uh, it is just a matter of time, uh, and and hopefully survival uh, is is on the is on the good side. Uh, Catherine, what's been going on in, in Newport and uh, Newport County uh, for the last seven eight months? Well, throughout Newport and Bristol County, the last couple months, you know, spring when the pandemic hit, um, everything was forced to shut down. So it was a little tough. And then once the summer hit, you know, because we're in the drive market, I have to say we fared better than most. Um, our restaurants, our retail shops, our attractions and our hotels were all open. And, you know, we had a, a not a I'm not going to say it was comparable to last year because nothing's comparable to last year. Um, but we did have, um, it did help, you know, generate business, the summer um, crowd. And, you know, the best part of it was there was something to offer the visitors and the residents. Um, I think that's the big thing. And again, that's what happens when you're in the drive market. And we saw a lot of new market segments that we've never tapped into before. For example, states like Virginia, 
Philadelphia or Pennsylvania, Delaware, a lot of those folks were driving up from the South and experiencing our destination for the first time, which was really encouraging. The fall, of course, um, you know, we're, we're having, as Kristen said, it's all about the weather in our destination. Um, and we're seeing a good influx of visitors and residents out wearing their masks, being very safe. Um, but, you know, again, I do worry about what Q1 is going to, how we're going to handle Q1 in our destination. So like everybody else, right? but we're going to weather and, you know, the drive market, people are still coming here um, and we're giving them something to do. I think that's what it's all about. And the ocean state, we certainly have everything for folks. So, you know, everything's outside. I see a lot of our attractions pivoting to other sort of ideas that they never would have thought of before. Never in the world would you be having a picnic on the grounds of the breakers. But this year they did a big promotion with stroll the grounds and gardens and you could even have a picnic on the grounds of the breakers, which is very rare. Right, I think it's interesting to see, um, I don't wanna say more or less accept acceptable, but um, you know, things. some things are more acceptable. <clears throat> Some things have proven to work better than uh, we would have ever thought, uh, which is nice. Uh, Jonathan, how about how about uh, Ocean House and, and and those other properties out at the south end of the state? Uh, the last seven months. Well, I'll, I'll echo the same statement. We're very fortunate that we're in the drive market. Um, our guests have traditionally have come from Southern Connecticut, New York, Boston, um, you know, Massachusetts as, as a whole, and of course we have our our local clientele uh, from in and around Rhode Island. Uh, so we've been really fortunate that uh, our summer was way better than anybody could have anticipated. Um, I think that the word that I like to use for the Ocean House and, and all of our properties is innovation. And sometimes we innovate and not realize we're innovating. Uh, well, we, do, we do things and it just works for what we have. For example, um, our secret garden. Uh, we partner with Vaufly Co. We have this beautiful space outside that's been generally open to the public. Uh, but this year we had to change it because we can only have 15 people out there. So we did it where you could uh, book it for a private event with you and 15 of your friends. And it was a, such an amazing opportunity for everybody to be able to come and see the view and uh, to experience the hotel. And we started doing that in some of our other properties. And uh, we have the pond house at the Weekapod. We have the Hobbit houses at the preserve. Um, we opened our gondolas a few months early this year. And we've gotten just an amazing, um, amazing guests coming out and really wanting to be here. The weather, of course, I mean, we couldn't have ordered this weather if we if we wanted to. There's no money that we could put, put, you could put on it, 73 <laughs> degrees. I mean, it's hot today. It's amazing. I just had guests that were telling me they were in the, they went into the ocean. Uh, I was at the state beach yesterday and it was packed. Um, so I think that if, for as much as everybody is hurting, um, that the weather has really been on our side. Um, the hotel has been full. All of our hotels have been faring really, really well. And now that we're going into the winter months, the word innovation comes up again. And um, we started doing movie nights at our pool at the Week of Pog Inn. So we have, they did such an incredible job, uh, the team there. They put bistro lights over the pool. We have a blow up screen and we're doing like watching Home Alone. And there's a beautiful menu that the chef came up with. And we're partnering with, uh, with our friends at Rotor and uh, Chateau de Sel, and we're we're doing their their wines and and you get popcorn and there's a step and repeat and it feels like you're going to like like a movie you feel like you're at a an old school movie theater where you know it was a big deal to go out to the movies and so we're doing that there of course the Hobbit House is uh, the preserve is not open to the general public at the moment uh, it's for our hotel guests and our and our members as well as the preserve members but if you're our not staying with us and you want to join the Hobbit house, you can book online. And I mean, it looks like a Hobbit house. If you've not seen it, it's, it looks like you're going to have second breakfast there. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, we, we partner with Maker's Mark there and you can have dinner outside. It's a small group, but it's, it's the perfect size. It falls under um, the, the current, the current rules and regulations. And um, you know, looking to the future, we're just rolling with it. I think like everybody, you know, when the, when the next something else happens, we, we get together and say, okay, how do we tackle this problem? And uh, not that we're all looking forward to it, but I think it's, I agree, I, I agree with everybody on the panel where we have to see what we're, what we're going to do next. Yeah. And, and we don't know what the next evolution of our business is going to be until we get there. 
Well, one of the reasons why I, I wanted to talk to the three of you, especially Kristen and Catherine, um, food and drink is, uh, it's a tourism destination here for, for, for an island. We, we all know this. I mean, you, you, you both mentioned uh, your, your restaurant weeks, uh, which are huge uh, draws. Um, but also, um, you know, you're connected to a lot more than just food and drink uh, through through Discover Newport and through uh, the CVB, Province Work CVB. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the other, the, the trappings around, uh, you know, food and drink, like the hotels, for example, or, uh, you know, Kristen, you mentioned the zoo and, you know, that's a, a major attraction for a lot of people, but they also have food events at the zoo, uh, you know, that, that sort of interact. Um, can you, you talk a little bit about how they're doing and, and what sort of changes, uh, you know, pivoting? I hate to keep using that word, but everyone uses it. What pivots you've seen at, at some of these spots? Uh, Kristen? Yeah. Um, well, I like I said, we we never enjoyed a real bump. So um, we I call it triage, and it's what are you going to really support to let it survive? And the things that make Providence special are the things that are have become by necessity most important to me, and that is our restaurant community, our downtown, our what I call tent pole. Um, attractions like the zoo, like Water Fire, like PPAC. So a lot of the work that we've been doing is um, bolstering those um, institutions. For example, uh, there is a group of like-minded organizations, including ours and the Downtown Improvement District, the Providence Foundation. We've all chipped in and we're doing a big ad campaign to get people to come downtown. Uh, in the next, I'd say two to three weeks, you're going to hear some major announcements about um, some of our arts community and some of the initiatives that we'll be doing throughout the holiday season to bolster um, some of those tent poles. So for us right now, it, it's really about survival and about preserving the things that make us special. And by extension, if we can keep water fire healthy and the zoo healthy and the restaurants healthy, the hotels will profit. And then again, as I said, we are working years in advance. So it's incumbent upon me to make sure all of that survives because we need them in 21, 22. I keep telling people, no one wants to be Detroit because you remember Detroit a few years ago, there was nothing. And we can't, we can't let ourselves get that way. And so those are the priorities right now. And we're really lucky that a lot of those um, organizations that I spoke of are well run. And so my days are filled working with um, a lot of those leaders and with state officials to make sure that they are, are there for the long run. All right. Absolutely. Catherine, how, how the, is the hotel business in, in Newport been? Absolutely. It's been, um, again, not as robust as last year, but they've been holding their own. A lot of them are doing a lot of different um, innovative packaging that they've never done before. You know, like, you don't have to work from your office anymore. You can work from any destination. So they're having stay at the hotel and work from home, work from your your uh, room, um, and offering incentives for that. Several different packaging opportunities for the hotels. They're getting very creative, and I have to say, not only the hotels but the restaurants and the attractions and the retail shops as well. You know, innovation is the name of the game, and I like to say. It's the new now. It's not the new normal because we know nothing's normal about 2020, <laughs> but um, it's the new nor now. And, you know, we see our attractions, as I mentioned before, pivoting to more outdoor activities uh, because that's what the visitor wants. That's what the resident wants. They want to be able to go outside and they want to be able to be entertained and, and so forth. So, you know, that's why kudos to the state for the Take It Outside initiative um, because that's helped everybody. And, you know, from your little markets that people are hosting outside to, you know, outside dining in the restaurants and the cities and municipalities have helped out too. I was talking to a friend of mine in New Hampshire and she said, all my outside restaurants have to take their outside components back in because they're expecting snow and they can't have the barriers up on the roads. And I'm like, you know what, we're lucky here. Let's not we want good weather, but we've been very lucky here in that, in that our municipalities see the importance of these restaurants having their outside component with the barriers up. And, and I have to say, you know, we did it, we received a take it outside grant for these, we call them warming blankets and we're calling it dining under wraps. And they look like somebody said, they look like a bait, you're in a baked potato, but they are, they're <laughs> silver blankets you receive when you do a road race and people love them. The restaurants have received them and they're just fantastic. And so we're having kind of a little contest to see 
who can, you know, showcase the warming blanket the best and do a little fashion show. But um, one of the things, you know, that I, you know, we're coming into the holiday season, which is tough for everybody, but this year would have been the 50th anniversary of our Christmas in Newport celebration, which was started by this little woman from South Carolina who came up to Newport and she wanted white lights throughout the city. And, you know, we're going to continue that tradition Yes, it's not going to be the, you know, 150 events that we had throughout like our Harbor Lights Parade of Boats because people can't gather by the shore to watch these boats uh, all decorated. But we're coming up with some creative ways for people to still enjoy the holiday season um, without gathering in large groups. Um, and again, it's very challenging for everybody. But I think, you know, it's something that when you think about it, it's it will probably be the new normal going forward because there's so many things that, you know, you got to find a silver lining in everything. And I think all of us have done that. And especially in our in the hospitality industry, I see our restaurants. Uh, a friend of mine in Canada calls it care mongering. But these restaurants have gone out of their way to help each other. I have a restaurant that's right across the street from a bank and the bank just repaved their new driveway. And because this restaurant didn't have an outside component, the bank donated their parking lot to this restaurant so they could have an outside component. That's Nobody right. does that. We had a, a little gym that had a, a cycling center. They couldn't be open. So our one of our hotels said, you know what? I have this beautiful long dock. Put your bikes on the dock and you can have your cycling class there. And it was so widely received, everybody received it like it was the best thing in the world. So that's what I'm saying. I think we're gonna continue um, throughout the industry, people working together and creating these new ideas. Like Kristen had mentioned, you know, with the zoo and, and you know, water fire. And those are traditional Rhode Island attractions and events that cannot go away. Um, right. And we're not gonna allow them to, so. No, absolutely true. I mean, it's very true. Uh, you know, and, and that spirit of, of collaboration cooperation is you know it's that's it's you know the Rhode Island way of everyone knows everyone it is. Uh, it's really, <laughs> really quite beautiful so true uh, and it, when it works it's really quite beautiful uh and, and you know it does generally work very well um you, you all mentioned uh to some degree uh the, the customers uh and you know for them it's you know completely brand new experience in some cases uh how you know what's been the reaction do you feel um uh, from the general public for, for all the things that, that you look at and you oversee, uh, you know, J Jonathan, you want to start with that? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, I say I was in Newport last night and it was fantastic. There's so many people out. It's so encouraging to see, um, you know, we all know Newport in November can be a bit quiet, but it was, I mean, the weather helped, but all the restaurants are doing great and it was a lot of fun to be there. Um, as far as our guests are concerned, you know, you have two types of guests. Um, some that are really concerned about, um, their safety and protection. Others are a little bit uh, less, you know, they, they understand it, but everybody's wearing their mask. Um, everybody's uh, making sure that they're being socially distant. And uh, overall, it's been really well received. And, uh, you know, we do have to let some people know that please wear your mask. Um, please, you know, make sure that, you know, you're six feet apart. Um, but we deployed uh, hand sanitation uh, stations all through the hotel. There's hand sanitizer on the on the tables, we have these uh, beautiful filtration systems throughout the restaurants and in all the guest rooms. Um, but overall, it's been really well received. And um, you know, you we were talking about uh, the breakers with having things on the lawn. Our our properties are a lot of outside. There's so much outside space. The Ocean House has multiple lawns. Uh, we were offering what we call picnic menus, so you can pre-order it from either your your guest room and we would have it at a table ready for you. Uh, so there was no social contacting at all. You would order it, we'd have the drinks and the food ready to go, and you can just get there, it was prepaid, and you wouldn't have to interact with any staff, and it was far away from other guests. Or you could have it delivered to your room, or you could have it picked up and take it, take it home to, home with you. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunity. We had it at, all, uh, at the Ocean House, the week of Pog, and then we have a Massachusetts property as well that we did that with. Um, that was closed for most of this time anyway and just reopened in uh, September. But um, they love that because it gave so many options of what to do. We can eat in the dining room. We, have, of course, have our, our multiple outdoor uh, restaurants in the summertime. They're all closed now for the season. Um, but there was a lot of outdoor opportunities. And then, again, with the Secret Garden, the Pond House, 
um, and then this picnic menu, it gave everybody the opportunity to, to dine at their comfort level. Um, and they, all of our guests that have come, they've just been so appreciative of us being here and excited to have us. I mean, the first day we opened the doors, we're like, oh my God, we're so excited to see everybody. We're so happy to be back. And there's this feeling of normalcy. You know, like you said, whatever that means these days. Um, we do an event with Jonathan Edwards Winery in Connecticut, and uh, we just had it this past weekend, and we're blessed with the weather. And Jonathan Edwards uh, said something that a woman, when he first she first got back to the vineyard, she sat in the chair and just threw her head back, and it was like this huge sigh of relief of uh, just being back to to normal. And we see that a lot here, and it. You know, it's not by accident, right? If you ask any restaurateur, any hotelier, anybody that's in the service business to reopen your restaurant and reopen your hotel, it took a lot of planning. You just don't open the doors. Um, it took a lot of staff training, preparation, um, a lot of coaching and, and talking to your staff and making sure that everybody was comfortable and everybody was ready to receive the guests. And the restaurants that are open and that are thriving, that are, are um, that, that have their guests returning, that, that's not... It's not easy work to do, and um, I think that's something that's important for everybody to to you know to know that if they're there and they're taking care of their guests, they put a. It's more than just cooking now. It's more than just waiting tables. It's 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 hospitality at the expert level of not only can we take care of the guests, get your steak out at the right temperature and the glass of wine that you asked for, but really protect your health, and um, and that's that's not easy to do and. And I, when I'm around town and, and throughout Westerly and all of the state, and I see these restaurants, my friends and everybody working, you know that there's a lot more behind that now. Right, absolutely. Kristen and Catherine, I think, you know, I, I wanna ask you the same thing, you know, how, how's the public re receiving uh, what's going on? But I also, I think it's interesting to, to note, and, and you both did uh, already, how much, you know, the staycation thing is easier here because we have so much here because you know just we have everything that we have here the arts history music beaches you know obviously food um you know is my 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 love but um chris what, what's the public reaction been like in the in the province area so it's been really interesting because um, one of the things I love about Providence is there's so many distinct neighborhoods and um, it's been really nice to see because I think that the thing that is supporting the particularly the restaurant industry is that loyalty. Um, whether it's to your neighborhood or to a specific restaurant. I, I had a friend that was really worried about some of those high-end restaurants. And I said, they have a built-in crowd. They have people that will come back and support them. Um, and that has turned out to be true. And then you've got these great neighborhoods um, like West Broadway or Thayer Street or um, Hope Street, where the, the neighborhood communities are really coming out and keeping those people alive. The, the place where that model doesn't work, unfortunately, is downtown because there really is no neighborhood um, that people come down to and they've lost their office workers and their um, university students for the most part and then meeting convention delegates, tourists. But um, we're and that's why we're working so closely with them. But for the remainder of Providence, I've been really heartened to see how the general public that lives in those neighborhoods have really sustained them. And then to our end, to try to get um, staycations, we, we've been really lucky over the past um, few years that we've been able to develop a lot more outdoor product in um, Providence. So we've been working on um, bike routes. Um, as you know, there's been a lot of new bike infrastructure in Providence. So we've got a lot of um, outdoor friendly in that respect. We've got the kayaks, we've had the river boats, we've had all of that stuff. Um, for the summer and fall. And I think that's really um, sustained us. And now we're looking at creative models um, for the winter and how are we going to do that? And to everyone else's point, we're a really cool drive market. Um, so I think you're going to see a lot of um, things where you can drive from place to place or that are drive through activities. And um, that's kind of what we're working on uh, right now, at least to get us through December, January, February. And we are uh, doing another restaurant week in January. It's going to be an, another month long event. It'll go January 10th to February 6th. And it'll be very similar to the one we did in September, which ended up being very successful. Excellent. That's great. Catherine, the, the reaction to Newport? Actually, you know, from <clears throat> in chatting with residents and also um, with the visitors that come up, they're like, wow, this place is beautiful. I've never been here before. What's to do? And they see all that we have to see and do. And it's been it's been positive. 
it's interesting though, the beginning of the summer, I noticed, um, you know, the whole mask wearing thing was a challenge because in Newport, it was mandatory you wear a mask from 12 o'clock to 10, 10 p.m. in the streets that are um, narrow. And people didn't seem to have a problem with that. And our city was um, sort of proactive and actually set up areas where you could get a free mask and people appreciated that. Um, so that was a good thing. And, you know, when we, we talk about staycations and, you know, I think um, you mentioned this, you know, how fun is it to stay? We have two new hotels actually in Newport that opened right. during the pandemic, the Brenton um, in July and then the Hammets in June. And so many people, residents, you know, and colleagues are like, wow, I got to spend the night at the Brenton and I had my food delivered. It was great experience. You never would have gotten that chance. Um, it's true. Before, I have mean, I, I, I right? post on Instagram that they're at one of the hotels. And yeah. I was like, oh, fun. Yeah, I mean, why not? You know, um, we have igloos that are um, constructed at Gurney's that people can dine in, which is kind of fun. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity there for uh, all different kinds of experiences. And, you know, we're really looking forward to when the breakers, they're doing a huge um, sparkle um, sort of exhibit at the back of the breakers with all these fantastic light shows and all this. And, and also in Blythewald in Bristol, they're doing that too. So, you know, these mansion properties are like, okay, we have all this land. What can we do? Um, so I think it's really going to be a holiday sparkle town uh, here in our destination. And I think, you know, people will just be happy to get outside and see, um, the lights and maybe see their friends from a distance or their family members. But again, um, from a staycation standpoint, we're really lucky because our hotels are creative in their packaging. And like you said, David, everybody wants to go spend the night in a hotel, a new hotel, right? Even an old one. Um, yeah, right. several, of, several of our hotels have actually um, sort of done some uh, renovations during their those three months, um, for example, the Hotel Viking just redid their entire spa and their pool area. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And, you know, they have a locals program uh, that you can take advantage of the spa and the, um, the pool area. So there's a lot out there. Um, and I, I, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, Getting out and enjoying. Exactly. I, I don't think, you know, that's that's a great way to end. I, I really uh, we're out of time. And I think just telling everyone to hang out and enjoy and spend your money at these local businesses and, and these local yes. sections is really the key. So uh, I want to thank uh, Kristen Adamo, Catherine Farrington and Jonathan Filer again for your time today. I, I really appreciate it. I uh, really appreciate your insights. And uh, let's just keep uh, getting out there and, and spending and, and eating and drinking local. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. Stay safe. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Great job, everybody. Fantastic. Thanks, Thank Trent. you. Thank you so much. This is really great. I love yeah. how you guys are like, it's not so bad. And I'm like, everything's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I talked about it a couple of times, but I, but I appreciate that, Chris. And I appreciate that. Well, we got to have, yeah. Oh, I mean, it's a different.